architect of the greatest business success story in history. And by the way, what am I referring to? Any guesses? The greatest business success story in history I would submit. What's your thought? When you think of the greatest business success story in history, what immediately comes to your mind? And there's no wrong answers, by the way. Berkshire Hathaway. And the gentleman behind that is who? Mr. Buffett, right? Great candidate. What else? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Right up there. What else? Steve Jobs. Say again. Standard Oil. Great guess. What else? Henry Ford. What else? IBM. List goes on. Is this a fun exercise? Would you like to know the story of what I would submit as the number one? And by the way, I've been working with this methodology for 20 years, and it's right in front of all of us. It's an open secret. It impacts every single name you just mentioned, and it is a tidal wave, a tidal wave strategy that encompasses and supports every single business success story on the planet, yours, mine, and ours, and it will for the foreseeable future. And it's one word, it's one word, What is it? Quality. Look, the higher quality you bring to your practice as a financial advisor at Merrill Lynch, do you think that's going to grow your client base and keep them or not? If you deliver a higher quality service, higher quality, right products, yes or no? Yes. So common sense says, okay, that makes sense. Matthew, that's not such an illumination, okay? Give me some data. The gentleman behind this story, by the way, one of his favorite quotes was, in God we trust, everyone else must use data. He's an American, but he's responsible for the resurrection of a country, and not just one country, but everyone on the planet. But the biggest success story was 1950, Japan, bombed to the ground, two atomic bombs dropped on him. We all know the story, right? In 1950, Japan had no export. They were importing everything. They were desperate, starving in the streets. General MacArthur's over there, can't get anything to work. Radios don't work, nothing works. The Japanese don't know how to make anything. They were known as being the makers of the worst quality products on the planet in 1950. Think about Marty McFly, Back to the Future. If we went back to 1950, made in Japan stamped on anything as an international what? Joke. An American. A Forrest Gump in history. One of the men responsible for the United States victory in World War II. A Forrest Gump most of us have never heard of, unless you have to be a student of business. This gentleman taught, wrote quality standards that guided everything we made in America during World War II. The guns, the tanks, the planes. So they function like made in Japan products do today. One of the reasons we were victorious in World War II. Goes to Japan five years after. The bombs were dropped. To help with the census, not to help with quality, to help with the census. He was a statistician by trade. And when the Japanese learned that the man who had helped to architect their defeat was in their country and was willing to share the knowledge with no strings attached, this gentleman stood six foot four. The Japanese, general Japanese, are a lot shorter. He towered over them, but he had huge compassion for the state they were in in 1950. MacArthur said, look, why don't you share what we were doing? They're desperate. They're starving. We're trying to rebuild the country. This gentleman said, absolutely. When the Japanese learned that he was in their country, they jumped at the opportunity. And this gentleman made a famous prediction in 1950 to the Japanese. He said, look, if you'll learn what I'm about to teach you, I predict within five years you'll be an exporting nation on your way to delivering the highest quality goods and services on the planet, and the world's going to be beating down your door to buy what you make. Made this prediction in 1950 when they're importing everything and starving in the streets. What do you think the Japanese said? Oh, we don't have time. What do you think they did? They jumped at the opportunity. Within two years, the heads of 80% of the gross national product in Japan had spent multiple days training with this gentleman. They beat the prediction by one year. In 1954, the board, the, the whole balance of trade swung, and Japan was exporting. And the rest is history with a footnote. This man was still ignored and unrecognized in America after the war because we shifted into quantity production out of quality and quantity. We went right into quantity. Why? There's no blame. But America was the only country left on the planet making stuff. 
Europe is bombed, Japan is bombed, it's just us. We just made it, make it as fast as you can, get out the door. This gentleman went back into private practice in Washington, called to Japan in 1950, and after this seminal butterfly effect, which started in 1950, in the 1970s, what started happening to America business? How did our car industry start doing in the 1970s? Many of you aren't old enough to remember this, but there were times when people would buy a brand new Datsun or Toyota, gather at the town square with sledgehammers, and do what? Smash it, because those evil Japanese were taking away American jobs. Don't make a better car for Chrysler or General Motors. Attack the symptom. By the way, Toyota follows this gentleman's methodology. That is their DNA. And every successful company on the planet today, Apple, Walmart, Procter & Gamble, Every organization is striving and endeavoring to bring in the science of quality that a 10-year-old can understand and apply to make their business more successful, more in demand, and sustainable. Quality is the ultimate business success and growth strategy. And I would submit that its spread throughout the world since 1950 is the greatest business success story in history because it's not just a man, not just a company, not just an industry, not just a country, it's the world. Everything we do today depends on what? To Corey's point, they're trying to get it so there's zero deaths per billion. Why? How? Quality. GE Aircraft Engines, they use Dr. Deming's methodology, and that's the name, Dr. W. Edwards Deming. He's the Deming Prize, it's in the front of your passport. That's the highest award you can win for quality in the world. It's awarded in Japan every year. Oscar broadcast ceremony on national television. He's a national hero. This gentleman, Dr. W. Edwards Deming, went to Japan in 1950 and is this Forrest Gump I'm referring to, one of the reasons we won World War II. He died in 1993, at age 93. And the footnote to the story, we didn't rediscover him until 1980, when he was 80 years old. After he had gone to the heads of American industry in the 1940s, after World War II, and said, look, we've got to keep doing this. And most captains of industry in America said, we don't have time. We just got to make it. We can't focus on continuous improvement or what the Japanese named his strategy, Kaizen. Anyone heard of Kaizen? What's this? It's continuous improvement. Dr. Deming's methodology and teaching. We don't have time. In 1980, a colleague of mine, an NBC News reporter and producer who worked with every president from Kennedy to Reagan, was tasked with the head of NBC News to figure out why American business was sinking by the head. And she went and she asked the heads of Japanese organizations, the Toyotas, the Honda, etc., what are you doing that's so different? How are you taking our business away? And they said, hey, it's not us. It's Dr. Deming. And she said, Dr. Who? And they said, no, not Dr. Who, Dr. Deming. She found out this 80-year-old gentleman was still practicing in his basement office, 20 minutes from the White House, and the Carter administration had never heard of him. Meanwhile, we're, 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 we're crying for protection from those evil Japanese making a higher quality product. That this American had taught them how, predominantly. She put him on television for 10 minutes in 1980. The second most impactful documentary in American history. If Japan can, why can't we? And that's why we're talking about Six Sigma. Just in time. Quality as a strategy. He was reintroduced to America and the world in 1980. And for the last 13 years of his life, he preached the gospel of quality not just in business, but in life, in relationships, and yes, making a better car and delivering a better financial service for the last 13 years of his life to thousands of people in a growing audience around the world. So I would submit that Dr. Deming's story and quality as a business strategy is the number one business success story in history.